What is good Tesla family? It's Ray J back with another video. And this one I want to break down what's going on with the Tesla Spy and video, the QQQ, and a couple of other tickers. And break down what's going on with the economic calendar, what you should be watching for as time progresses. And also some very big developments on the charts. But before I break anything down, most information, before I get into any more details, let me just mention a couple of things. Firstly, I am not a financial planner, so take nothing I say as financial advice. And also, if you guys can, please check out the Mumu link, which is down below and in the description. If you sign up for Mumu and deposit $100 into the account, you are guaranteed up to five free stocks. If you deposit $1,000, you're guaranteed up to 15 free stocks, and this offer ends in just a couple of weeks. Anyways, now let's break down what's going on with the charts. Tesla and the market have been selling off just a bit, but Tesla is still holding its support, and we still have this possible inverse head and shoulders like structure that could be developing. If this ends up holding, there's going to be a good chance of Tesla trying to get a breakout soon, but if this fails, Tesla could turn back to bearish, so I'm going to break down some critical supports to watch for, what's going on with the data, and what the news is saying about Tesla. So... The imports and exports data came out. We saw the deficits in our balance of trade end up uh, being technically a little bit lower than expected, which could you know, suggest another boost to GDP is coming. But overall, this wasn't really enough to help the market as the market is still selling off after this news came out. Now, at 10 o'clock a.m. Eastern Standard Time, we have the Economic Optimism Report. At noon, we have Barr from the Fed giving a speech. And at 1 p.m., we have the three-year notes auction coming out. So those are three very, very important pieces of data and time frames for us to be looking out for. Uh, but we'll be watching to see how things go, at least as time goes on. But with that being said, guys, watch for volatility at those times, and we'll see how this affects the markets. 10 o'clock a.m., 30 minutes after market open, watch the economic optimism report and see how that affects us. In the morning, we had more data coming out, and that's for the exports and imports data. This already came out, guys, and uh, this showed another deficit once again. This narrowed 2% to $63.2 billion, suggesting GDP could get a lift. Uh, and the market actually still continued to drop even though this came out, so it didn't really affect it that much. I guess you can see our deficit right over here for goods and services. This data just came out, not really affecting the market that much. Now, as the market rebounded, uh, you know, from yesterday, some stocks out there are still being negatively affected. Others are still holding up nicely. I wanted to just break that down uh, over the next few minutes. For Boeing, we actually saw some negative news that came out after a panel blew out on an Alaskan Airlines. And a lot of their 737 Maxes, they actually got basically uh, taken for inspections, which was some negative news technically. This is why Boeing fell 8% on Monday. There's also some news that the New York Times is suing ChatGPT over, uh, for open AI over copyrights infringement. That's some big news. Uh, besides that, there's not a whole lot else going on that's like too crazy. There's also some negative news and controversy going on with Sheen because of the fact that uh, this is an e-commerce company with roots in China. And there's a lot of scrutiny because of some environmental and labor concerns. That's very, very important stuff. I just want every person working there to be safe. Not great news whatsoever for them. Besides that, when it comes to Tesla, the Giga Mexico has a ceremony schedule speculation that's coming out. So people are basically trying to figure out when they're going to, you know, open this Giga factory, which would be bullish news for Tesla. Uh, but the thing is, they, they're still working on the site. There's a lot of preliminary work on Tesla's site that's going on. So I wouldn't necessarily say this is something we should be like kind of like getting excited for for the short term. It could take many, many months, maybe even another year before they end up opening this. So just be patient. Uh, if Tesla does end up announcing some kind of uh, uh, opening ceremony date, that's going to be bullish. So we'll see if that ends up happening. But for now, we'll just be very patient. So that's it for now in terms of uh, data and news and such. I didn't see anything else that was too crazy. Uh, but now let's break down the charts and talk about how things are looking. So on Tesla, we have a nice inverse head and shoulders like structure that could be developing. But don't forget, guys, there's a lot of trickery in the market. So we're going to be watching to see if support holds. Tesla has resistance at basically this 240 area, 241 zone, 242, 244, followed by 247.5. For support, watch 238, we have 236, and 234 as critical support. That's where the daily 200 EMA happens to be. So the most important support is 234. We have to hold above that. There's also support at 238. How do I think Tesla's looking? We are kind of selling off just a little bit, but we're trying to base in the 238. So we're kind of trading sideways. We're going to be watch to see if this support holds. It's going to be very important for Tesla. It could retrace a little bit more, get close to like, you know, the 
mid 237s let's just hope that it holds the support and tries to balance because we do have a potential structure that could be developing there are two possibilities which are very very simple we basically have this inverse head and shoulders we have this left shoulder here the head and the right shoulder forming are we going to see tesla do this where it just continues to trade sideways chomps around a little bit and we eventually get a breakout later on after cpi just hypothetically for the inverse head and shoulders or does the critical support I called out end up failing? Do we end up coming down like this, trading sideways, then we end up breaking the support after CPI, for instance, to turn back to bearish? That's the more bearish case. If we end up failing to do so, we go back down below 236, and we end up testing the 200 EMA on the daily at 234. So we're going to be watching for this very, very closely. Now, another thing you could do with Tesla real quick is just take our Fibonacci retracement tool, uh, look at our critical level, at least for now, just to be looking for where support could hold. Uh, this is a little hard to see. I apologize. Maybe I should just move this a little bit. Uh, but anyways, 237.25 is where the 0.618 retracement happens to be. So like right here. Uh, we'll see if it comes back down there and then tries to bounce. So I could see it dropping a little bit more. But watch and see if it holds 237. Do we bounce here? Or do we end up seeing the seller step in and causing it to lose 236? So I would say critical supports in that 236, 237 zone like right here. Do we hold this support? Does Tesla hold this support right here? If we lose it, we could turn back to bearish and hit 234 and, and lose it. If we hold this and end up bouncing, there's going to be support for the inverse head and shoulders, and it could end up holding. So watch that very carefully. It's going to be key for Tesla. Make sure you watch supply and demand, which I called out. Spy is sinking. Uh, I want to call out that at 469.5, we have the 0.618 retracement. We also have support at 47. You're going to be watching those levels very carefully. I'm going to try to be kind of quick with this part, guys, because I'm kind of late right now. Watch 470. If we lose that, we're going to be sinking back down to 468 to turn back to bearish. If we hold above 470, that 470 zone, there could be a bounce coming to fill this gap. So we'll see if 470 holds on SPY. is selling off a bit, but wait and see how it re reacts to the economic optimism reports. Uh, it is selling off a bit, so we'll see if we get a bounce off 470 then you know make our way back up we're also going to be watching this zone right here this 470 area which is our breakout area so watch this as a critical level we will see if spike could break out watch 472 473 and then 474 is resistance or support watch 471.64 followed by 470 let's see if we hold 470 if we hold it there's going to be potential if we fail to hold it we could turn back to bearish be very very careful on the qqq we're going to be watching this retracement area uh, if it if we lose 401, you'll be looking at 399 to 400 is critical support. That's where our 0.618 retracement is, not to mention our critical EMAs. I actually checked the EMAs earlier. Uh, so we're going to be watching that very carefully, especially on the four-hour time frame. Uh, we have the 20 EMA at 400. Uh, watch and see, do we hit 400 and bounce and push back up to above 402 then 404 or do we lose this 400 area and start sinking back down to this imbalance around 397 400 is going to be a key level we're currently at 402 so watch and see if we break or not uh, 400 is where the 20 ema happens to be so watch that very carefully on the qqq do we bounce off that or do we end up getting a big rejection that's going to be key for nvidia we're trading sideways right now in this range we're still holding up decently we're currently at 520 uh, four, I called out 527.5 and then 530 in my previous videos as some resistance levels. You can see right here, we test this resistance. Now we're approaching 530. Might trade sideways here, but if NVIDIA starts sinking back to if it loses 520 and starts coming back down, it's going to test 515. If that fails, it's just 512 and 508. But if it basically loses 520, we could turn a little bearish, and that could slow things down quite a bit. Uh, going to be very careful with NVIDIA right here. If it does retrace, this could drag the market down a little bit. So be very, very careful on NVIDIA. We'll see how it does. Uh, I think it's going to be range-bound for now, but be careful on any retracements. That could slow things down. As far as Apple goes, you're going to be watching 183 as a critical level. I think 183.5 it is. If it loses 183.5, it could be sinking back down to this 182.6 area, back into our chop zone, which happens to be between... 183 and 180 we're going to be making our way back down if we lose 183.5 if we hold 183.5 there is hope for it to bounce and push back up to 185 so be careful on apple we'll see if 183.5 holds if we lose it we could turn bearish if we bounce off it we could hold up this could be an inverse and shoulders like structure so watch and see if we hold it or not but with that being said guys thank you all so much for listening I want to cut the video here we need to upload this as fast as possible have a great day watch the critical supports and we'll see how we re react to all the data Thank you all for listening again, guys, and peace out.